<laughs> Man, to think, Philip's so talented. He made that so many years ago. Like, it's still good, right? So good. Um, uh, I'm excited to be here with you guys tonight. Can you give them one more hand for that video and that song? That was fun, man. That was fun. Well, uh, it's, it's, it's our final Wednesday together in this dating series, and I'm glad we get to cap it off the way we're about to. Uh, I have a quick favor. I'm going to ask the guys in the booth, because uh, I don't know where my notes went that were on here, but they're missing. They might be back there. Um, yes. So are those the thick ones, or are those? Th okay. Sweet. Everybody, this is what happens two days before winter getaway. Ed loses his business. Sweet. So sorry. Uh, thank you, everybody. All right, cool. So uh, now that I uh, have these, I can begin. Um, <laughs> would you guys please pray with me real quick? Thank you. Father God, thank you for uh, this time where we get to spend giving you our minds and our hearts as we uh, do our best to find wisdom in this topic of dating and uh, understanding uh, our role uh, as we prepare for someday hoping to be married. And, and when we think about men and women and how we behave and how we treat each other, where our hearts are at, God, help us to gain wisdom and to, and to be the kind of person um, that we know we want to be. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right, yeah. So you guys, um, we are going to talk today about the third pillar. The first one we heard from Aaron Horner was this relational wing, the importance of kind of understanding that we want to build a relationship on a solid friendship, right? We talked a bit about that. Um, I talked uh, with the junior high kids a bit about how I grew up in a neighborhood where there were a bunch of empty lots where they dug these huge foundations for basements and how like um, we, we, we could see homes being built just without a foundation, but they would ov over time crumble and fall. And we think that if you're going to be in a relationship of any kind uh, that's a dating relationship, there ought to be a solid friendship there first. It's just, it's wise to do that. Um, next, we, uh, we had uh, junior high and high school split up last week. We talked about sex. We talked about God's design. Yeah, somebody give a whoop whoop for sex. There you go. It's worth celebrating, you guys. Anyway, um, it was really good. I'm glad we had the conversations we had, and I encourage you to continue to talk with people like your parents and with your leaders to gain wisdom in this area, to, to get out of your system that part of you that feels awkward or, or dirty talking about it because it's beautiful and, and God made us and created it, and so we ought to not be ashamed to talk about it. Today, we're talking about overall how there's a spiritual dynamic to this whole dating relationship thing. It's really important to kind of dive into. And I want to start by sharing a bit of my story with you. When I was a freshman and became a Christian, many of you have heard that, but the, the summer after that, my sophomore year, before my sophomore year, I took private driving lessons, right? How many of you uh, took private driver's ed? Like you took it not through school, but you kind of took a class. Okay, cool. I was so excited to get a car that, um, you know, I was willing to pay for a class that would help me to be able to drive the moment I turned 16. Well, in this class, Northwest Suburban Drivers School, anyone ever heard of it? Probably not. But it was really great. Um, I met this girl, Elaine. And I made this friend, uh, uh, my buddy, uh, his name was Earl. And so Elaine and me uh, and Earl, we were buddies. We sat, uh, some of you have buddies in class, right? You've got people that you go to that class, and like they're your buddy, right? You're looking forward to seeing them at that class. Well, um, as, as I recognized, you know, Elaine as like a pretty girl that I kind of liked, I was like asking Earl, like, Earl, do you think, uh, you know, I could maybe date Elaine? What do you think? And so we all ended up going on a drive together right? Because your instructor, your instructor, it was not at all romantic, but I wish it was. Um, it wasn't, though. So the, the instructor was in the passenger side, you know, and I'm driving, and Earl and Elaine are hanging out, and we had this awesome day where we drove from, like, the far west suburb of Chicago all the way into the downtown part of Chicago. This driving instructor was out of his mind. Like, he took us all the way down to, like, the busiest part of Chicago as, like, a brand new driver, we parked on the beach, and, uh, and we, he like had a basketball in his trunk, and we played basketball for like an hour and then drove back. It was the weirdest thing, but it allowed me to get to know this girl that I liked, Elaine, right? So um, I had become a Christian less than a year prior, 
and I had, with both feet, like, just jumped into this faith. Like, I wasn't a Christian, and I decided to follow Jesus, and it wasn't for me, and we all have different stories, but for me, it wasn't like I'm gonna kind of figure it out as I go, and I'm just sort of gonna align myself with some of his teachings, but not really, for me, I didn't know how to be a Christian unless I just went all in. Like, have you guys ever played the hokey pokey, right? You, you know, put your right arm in, you put your right arm out, oh, yeah. put your right arm in, and you, you do the hokey pokey, and you turn, right? right? And that's what it's, great. But then at the very end, what do you do? You put your whole self, right? Like, for me, that's the only way I know how to be a Christian. It's the only way I see people who are followers of Jesus in the Bible who are Christian, they, they're all in, right? So that was the only way I knew how to do it, um, and I messed it up. I didn't always do it right, but in my heart and mind, I was all in. So I meet this girl, and you know what? She wasn't a Christian, and, and, and we started to date after a couple of months, and uh, it was actually really great for a while, and she was super sweet. We had a ton of fun at the turnaround dance. You guys call it Sadie Hawkins out here. What do you call the girl, the, the, the girls? Okay, we called it turn, Turnabout. So um, we went to a turnabout, and I think we stole the show when the Grease Mega Mix hit, you know? And we had, like, our own, like, thing. It was so much fun. Um, but over time, you guys, it became a difficult part of our relationship uh, that we didn't have the same core. And so I did the thing that um, a lot of people do, and I don't think it's, uh, I think it's a noble thing to try to do, but I did my best to share my faith with her, and I invited her to some church stuff. In fact, I invited her to a thing at my church group that I was hoping might help change her mind or, or, or help her to understand faith better, and uh, I wasn't able to go to the one that uh, she went to. I had a very important, like, basketball, like, tournament to go to, and so my mom, who was friends with her, and they were tight, she went with my mom to this event at my church that I wish I could have gone to. And I got back from my tournament, and she finished going to this event at church with my mom. And I remembered asking her, you know, so how did it go? You know, like hoping she's going to be like, I became a Christian, you know? Like, I was hoping that that would be like what she said, right? And, and she was super respectful. She's like, oh, it was really cool. I thought the music was great, and I met a lot of your friends, and, and your, it was so good to spend time with your mom. I'm like, awesome. And it's so like inside, I'm going like, what happened? You know, like, did you follow Jesus now? And she, she totally didn't. It was okay. But, but, but I was so sad because I wanted so badly for her to get that part of who she is and how she was made and for her to make that connection with God. After time uh, went by, there's some pretty nasty things that happened. She made some choices, in this case, that really hurt me, and she ended up breaking it off with me, and, and it was really hard. It's really hard. And uh, my brother was so sad, you guys, because my little brothers at the time, who were super younger, they were like in elementary school. They used to come with me to hang out with her at her house, like it was like a half hour away. And um, her older brother, Sean, was this guy. So like all of us kind of hung out. And so I was at her house with my brothers, and we're all kind of hanging out. And like this is where she kind of lays it on me. And she's like, I don't think we should be dating anymore. And so I like, you know, you know, final hug and goodbye, and we got it, we understood it. And it was really hard and difficult, but I'm driving home like a half an hour from McHenry to Crystal Lake, just like, uh, like the older brother, like bawling, and my brother's in the back seat, like, are you okay, Eddie, you know? And I'm like, I'm okay, I'll be fine. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah. I guess I only share that not because I'm looking for sympathy. I've been married 12 years to my awesome wife, Courtney, and, you know, but, but there was, for me, there was, for me, this pain in my heart around uh, not being able to share with her the thing that for me was central to my identity, you know? And we're going to get more into that in a little bit. You see, today, I'm not going to tell you that the Bible says you shouldn't date a non-Christian. I'm not going to say that, right? I'm not going to say that. You see, in the Bible, both the Old Testament and the New Testament, it doesn't say, it doesn't say you shouldn't date someone who isn't a Christian, do you know why? Because there's nothing in the Bible about dating. Nothing. It didn't get invented yet. It wasn't something that existed, okay? So I love when I hear people say things like, you know, you should listen to a biblical view of dating. Really? Like, find that for me. A sermon about how the Bible says Christians shouldn't date non-Christians would be the shortest sermon in history. Because you won't find a Bible verse about it. 
Now, does that mean the Bible is of no use to us when it comes to dating? Absolutely not. There's tons of wisdom here in the scriptures that pertains to dating, just not directly about it. So what does the Bible have to say about this? Like, for example, does the Bible say anything to you about where you should go to college? No. No. But I think with your small group leader and just through reading the scriptures, you can gain wisdom about your decisions. Does the Bible have any answers for how many hours of video games or Netflix you should watch per week? No, No, it doesn't. But (laughs) do you think you can gain some wisdom around what that looks like in your life? Yes or no? Okay. Now, when people say, if you're a Christian, you shouldn't date a non-Christian, that's somebody trying to say something safe, but they are going beyond what the Bible actually says. Now, whereas that specific instruction is not in the Bible, I, I agree with it, and here's why. Here's where that idea comes from. Take a look at this verse. 2 Corinthians 6, 14 says, Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. Now, this passage is used all the time in relationship uh, contexts for a reason. Uh, But it's not only about relationships. It's about business decisions. It's about anybody that you tie super closely together, who's somebody who's like in your inner circle, people who are like at your heart of heart, somebody that you have life with at an intimate level, right? It says not to be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common, or what fellowship can the light have with darkness? The message translation gives us another glimpse at this passage. It says, don't become partners with the people who reject God. How can you make a partnership out of right and wrong? That's not a partnership. That's a war. Does anybody in here know how that feels? Is light best friends with dark? No, it's not. A yoke, take a look at this. This is a, not of us are, a lot of us aren't farmers anymore, by the way. I don't think any of you are farmers. If you are, then you already know this lesson. But um, back then when Jesus taught, he talked a lot about crops and farming and animals because that's what was happening at the time. And so this is a yoke, and here's how it's used, right? Um, y- you want to have uh, two oxen kind of together, you know, and they're pulling a burden together. Whatever's behind them, have you, have you ever had to pull something? It's kind of a load. It's a heavy load, and they're carrying it together, and this helps them to do it better together. Again, it's a, it's a wooden bar that joins you together. An unequally yoked team has one stronger and one weaker, or one taller or one shorter, right? So the weaker or the shorter ox, right, would walk more slowly than the taller or stronger one, causing the load, like, to go in circles, okay? Think about this. If you had a really stubby, short ox, a really tall, strong one, they're not moving in the same direction together. There's, there's some issues, right? You're not going to be able to go where you want to go. When the oxen are unequally yoked, they cannot perform the task set before them. Instead of working together, they're at odds. They are at odds with each other. Wouldn't it be better to be connected to someone who is with you in that way equally, right? So a Christian being equally yoked means more than the bare minimum. It means more than just a common belief in fundamental truths. So I want to suggest to you that, for example, there was another girl I ended up dating in in high school for a little while um, that was someone who said they believed in God. I'm like, awesome! That means you qualify. Like, in my mind, I'm like, checkbox, safe, I can date them because they said they believe in God. Well, as we got to know each other better, which, by the way, we weren't friends first, so I found out this stuff later. But, like, once we um, started to get to know each other better, I realized, okay, she might, like— on a survey, check a box that says, I believe there's a God somewhere. But like there wasn't a part of her life that wanted to know Christ and follow him, right? And so even in that realm, like there wasn't an active joining with you in this faith journey kind of a person that I could be with, right? We were unequally yoked. Although we fill out the same checkbox on a survey, we were not equally yoked, right? So, I would like to suggest to you that being equally yoked holds a deeper significance that encompasses not only, again, common belief systems, but this complementary nature of two individuals 
in every aspect of their life, spiritually and everything else. So check out this picture real quick. This right here is a picture of, you know, like, the, the whole circle is like your life, right? That represents your life and, and potentially the person you might end up with someday, right? And if you're a follower of Jesus, and I have to underscore that with everything I say, because this is specifically and unapologetically a Christian perspective. Someone who follows Jesus, this is the perspective I'm offering with you to see today. If you have a partner a boyfriend or girlfriend, ultimately someday somebody you're married to, this is the picture you kind of want at the forefront of your mind. Now, the reason it's important, I think, to have this at the center is because if it's not, it's not something we've actually seen modeled in the Bible. And let me show you something else here. Um, if you find that you're with somebody who doesn't believe Jesus is the way and the truth and the life, and, and, and all of that good stuff. Let me tell you something very quickly. At the core of a Christian's life, we believe that Jesus loves you, made you, gave his life up for you, that our life is this living representation of our gratitude for him. We just sang the songs we sang with a deep emotion, and we, we heard Phil lead us in these songs. They ought to resonate with something deep inside of us about how we were made, why we're here, our purpose. A lot of uh, that stuff is stuff maybe we don't think a whole lot about or deeply enough about, but at your core, if you love and know Jesus, and your life is this living gratitude towards him for forgiving you of your sins, because we've all made mistakes, yet when we say we all make mistakes, sometimes we forget that some of those mistakes are pretty big, but also he didn't just die for you, he lived for you. There's a huge positive here. When Jesus walked the earth, he was a sinless person who then gave the credit for that sinless life to us. It was this divine exchange. Our sin, our blemishes, our issues fell on his back. He died and he suffered. Yet, we received the blessing. We received love. We received acceptance when he who knew no sin, became sin for us so we could become the righteousness of God. This amazing thing happened. And this, at the core of a follower's heart, is who you are. You are a son and a daughter of the God Most High who made everything. That's the most beautiful message in all of human history. That's the center of who you are. You want that to be at the center of who you spend your life with. And if you think that who you're dating isn't preparing you for that, well, it is. Dating is not a small, casual thing. And those of you who, tried, who maybe have tried to use that or have seen others try to use it as a casual thing have seen the wake of destruction that follows. It's not a short, casual thing. It's super important, and so we ought to treat it that way. And so here's what ends up happening. One of two things happen. If you continue, right, in a relationship or if you pursue because a lot of you may not even be close to being in a relationship right now, and that's okay, right? If you're sitting here going, oh man, like I've never even kissed anybody, or I've never even been to a dance, that's okay. Think of this for the future, because if you end up with somebody that isn't with you in this way, um, who believes and follows Christ, this will happen. Um, e either you'll connect with God and stay close to Him, and then push that other person to the side, because you know what? If you stay committed and close to God and that person isn't in it with you, they'll ultimately end up feeling left out. It ultimately means they look into your heart and they don't fully get you. Think about that. The person you're closest to, if they peer into your heart and want to know you well, they can't possibly know the most intimate part of who you are if they don't also know Jesus. And that's hard for them and that's hard for you, right? If the person you end up being married to someday can look at the very thing in your heart, the thing that drives you and doesn't get it, it means they don't fully know you and fully understand you. And that is a hard, difficult place to be. So, we'll keep going here. This next one may also happen. You might say, well, this person means so much to me, and I don't want to infringe my faith on them, so God gets pushed to the corner. 
and your faith in God gets kind of edged out to the outskirts, and that other person maybe takes that place. I've seen both of these scenarios kind of work itself out. It's something that's really difficult to face. It's really difficult to deal with. But it's ultimately one or the other. Like if you end up in the situation, it's very difficult to maintain. A, it's actually impossible to maintain an intimate, close relationship with somebody you're dating that you want to give yourself to if that self is something they can't understand if they're not someone who's also tracking and following Jesus in that way. So ultimately, this next picture, this is the one we're getting for. Uh, we, have, we have some questions we want to answer first real quick about that. Um, so what do you do, right? You got to be articulate about it. If there is somebody that you want to date and you want to know what they believe, ask them, right? You want to ask them. You can totally ask them. Don't assume don't take it lightly. Don't go, well, I, uh, don't do what I did, by the way. Don't accept the answer, oh, yeah, well, they, they, they believe in God or they went to church once. And they go, okay, good, they're in the, in the good zone. You know, there's somebody that I can totally date now. Um, if you haven't developed a friendship that informs you uh, of their, like, gut, like who they really are and who they want to be, then hold off. Wait till you really know them super well and wait till you know what they believe because you don't want to be yoked with somebody that you can't move forward together with. You don't want to be with somebody that's going to pull you in a different direction because that's painful and it's hard. It might feel like it's working for a while because you'll just like fake it and kind of go, yeah, this really sucks, but we're all going this way together, right? And you can fake it for a while and force that work to kind of work out, but over time, it doesn't work. It's two people going two different directions in their heart and in their life. So be practical. Tell them, because if nine times out of ten you're making a decision and you're looking to God for that decision, if God isn't a part of their life, how can we possibly do a life together? If you follow Jesus and love him, and you are also dating someone who doesn't love and follow Jesus, that's a hard place to be. Some of you know that already. Some of you need to know that so that you can maybe avoid that. Because you're stuck between two situations here. To stay in that relationship and fully honor both God and the other person, it's almost impossible. What's really hard to do in this situation, because if you're in a relationship with somebody that doesn't know and follow Jesus, uh, and it doesn't mean you have to be perfect at it, by the way. You don't have to be someone who absolutely understands all there is to know and do about following Jesus. But if you know that's who you want to be, and you know it's not who the other person wants to be, it's really hard to tell them that you have to break it off. But what's impossible to do is to force them to do anything they don't want to do. And if you continue in that pursuit of the relationship with them, to both fully honor them and God is impossible. So you're either stuck between doing something really hard or something impossible. <laughs> so I suggest doing the hard thing, the integrity-filled thing, if you're faced with the situation. You want to be with somebody that gets who you are in your gut, gets your heart, gets why you wake up every day. Don't you want someone in your life like that? If you love Jesus and he's your heartbeat and he's your salvation, you want someone with you that gets that. You're not going to find a Bible verse that says who to date, but you are going to find someone, you're going to find instruction about who you want to get tied to, who you want to be yoked with. And like I mentioned, I've made that mistake already. Gratefully, my wife and I uh, have been married for 12 years, I think, only because of Jesus. <laughs> uh, we've gone through lots of highs and lots of lows. But if we didn't have God at the center, it would not have lasted this long. You want that, the center. This is what you want. Even if you're looking at this and you think, well, I don't even know about that cross yet, Ed. I don't even know if that's what I want. You're like, take the cross away. I just want that. <laughs> if there's no cross, I just want two people. I just want to be with somebody. Don't settle for just anybody. You're worth way more than that. Be picky. It's okay. Be realistic. Be honest. Okay? I think you can do it. And I pray for you that you do desire this, all three, that God would be at the center of your relationship because he's at the center of your heart and their heart. Let me pray, and then I want to invite some people on stage.
Uh, God, thank you so much uh, for tonight. We pray that the rest of this evening uh, we have some good dialogue and some questions uh, that have been asked by our students. We pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. All right, cool. Uh, I'd like to have.